Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to speak about a constituent of mine who passed away last year, uh, Mark Botno. I, I first uh, met Mark Botno when I was in grade three, going into grade four at a basketball camp uh, uh, run by John Laverell. And, um, what Mark was to me at that time is what he was to all communities, is the fact that he took me in and made me feel welcome as somebody new to this sport and hadn't had a clue of what I was doing, but uh, Mark was there always smiling and, and, and quite an athlete at that. Uh, in his short life, he did make a positive impact on all who knew him, zest for life, great love for family and friends, was infectious and precious. Mark had a caring, warm nature and he had a way of delivering knowledge and wisdom that sparked everyone's attention and always with a laugh. A laugh that was never forgotten, a laugh of strength. He was a light that came upon his face, even though he had a devastating diagnosis. In August 2016, Mark was diagnosed with stage four carcinoma undefined. It's devastating news to his family and friends. But Mark handled that the same way he dealt with life, with courage, strength, love, and puns. Puns were a way for him to, make, to deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of living with a terminal illness. He shared a pun a day Soon all his families and friends joined in. In true Mark style, he provided laughter, love and hope to his family and friends during the most difficult time in his life. Mark was born and died on the same day. In his honour, his family would like to request that April 19th become National Pun Day. So we're asking everyone across the province to help share the joy and laughter on April 19th by posting your favourite pun on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whichever social media vehicle you use. Hashtag UBO, hashtag National Pun Day, hashtag Bots33, hashtag Love, hashtag Light. And I just endear me for a few more seconds. Mark's favorite puns. I thought I'd read a few off. I have a fear of speed bumps, but I'm slowly getting over it. What's the best thing about living in Switzerland? Well, the flag's a big plus. I might never get over this addiction of reference, referencing the Beach Boys, but wouldn't it be nice? Seven days without a pun makes one week. I wanted to watch the World Origami Championship on TV, but it was only pay-per-view. Mr. Speaker, we miss Mark in our province, and I hope everyone joins in National Pun Day on April 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising today to talk about an issue I've talked about many times in this House before, gas prices. Liberals voted down an NDP bill to regulate the price of gas in Ontario and bring some transparency into that market. I, I want them to see the results of that. Gas prices in Niagara Falls on Sunday were $1.30. We see the price go up anywhere from 8 to 12 cents overnight. On long weekends or holidays, it's even worse. We've seen this from the beginning. When the price of oil crashed, we didn't see the same drop at the pumps. This means that when oil started to rise again, we knew that gas prices were going up even higher. People are being gouged by the oil companies, and we have zero transparency in Ontario on how gas prices are being set. We are paying outrageous prices for gas, and that comes out of monies that families need for a roof over their head or food on the table. The government has refused to address gas price gouging in any substantial way. They should be ashamed that when they had the chance to do to act, they decide to do nothing. When gas prices are this high, the hardworking people in our communities, right across the province of Ontario, are reminded how unfordable this province has become. Every time they start their car. I hope this Liberal government will address gas prices, and if they won't, then we'll do it on June 7th when we bring in an NDP government that actually puts people's needs first. Thank you. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, today is National Advanced Care Planning Day, and it's a day to think about who will speak for you when you can't speak for yourself, who will make decisions for you when you're unable to. Advanced care plan is ensuring that your substitute decision maker knows what's important to you. Thinking about the end of life is something that we don't generally want to do. My grandmother used to say she didn't want to die because she wanted to see how the story turned out in the end. But we all have to leave the party at some point. So talking about our wishes at the end of life helps to remind us of what's most important in life. So often the most important things are small and personal, 
They're not grand gestures or big interventions. So, Speaker, it's about living well until the end. Letting your substitute decision maker know what's important to you will, hope, will help you do that. And advanced care planning is a way of supporting them when they're called on to support you. It's a vulnerable time for both of you. So, Speaker, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone in this province who works in palliative and end-of-life care and hospices and visiting home hospice and all the work that they do and all the work that primary care practitioners do to try and advance advanced care planning and help people at the end of their lives. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Thornhill. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontario will create a new francophone university. Last week, the 12 mem board members of the francophone university have been um, appointed, and each one of them is committed towards the francophone community in Ontario and towards the strengthening of post-secondary education in French. Together, those member bring a rich experience in the university sector, and they will apply it to help create this university. Here is the list of the members. Diane Adams, who will be the president to the implementation of the university. Frédéric Dimanche, professor for Ted Rogers School of Hospitality. Gren O'Fara, CEO of the media group TFO, Kupriya Agar, second year student, George Pivanier in Hamilton, Marianne Lowe, Professor Florence Nigesem Buhoro, General Director of the Francophone Centre in Ontario, Marie Andrew Vermette, who is a lawyer, Rodrigue Gilbert, Gilbert who works for Pricewaterhouse Cooper, Jean Michel Beck, founder and CEO of Ecom Group, Jacques Nome, and finally, Norma Cote, VP for Evaluation and a Better Performing Performance Review. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Statements. The member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I visited the home this week of 70-year-old Norm Cloutier of Welland, Ontario, who lost his wife last September and now has an Enbridge gas bill that will total nearly $1,000 a month for equipment he was scammed into buying. Enbridge is assisting Mr. Cloutier by disputing current charges for all equipment still on his property and some of it sitting outside uh, in his yard after he was told by one of these door-to-door -door reps that his furnace, air conditioner and water filtration system would have to be replaced because the company went bankrupt. The equipment was only six years old. And why would anyone uh, like Norm think that he would be deceived? We have four finance companies involved who make it clear they're not responsible for how these contracts were obtained at the door. Two of them we've been in touch with, and of course it's gone to their legal department. Interesting how they have lawyers to represent their best interests, and seniors have no one to protect these devious reps that come to their door. We know the highly acclaimed door-to-door -door legislation that uh, has already passed is already being worked upon as people are now posing as service technicians and, of course, making prior phone appointments using the same questionable tactics at the door to get into someone's home. All of these companies involved need to assist Mr. Cloutier with reasonable buyouts since he's on a government pension and these companies need to cancel contracts associated with them. I have never seen anything like this, Mr. Speaker, and the Ministry of Consumer Protection Service is trying to help Mr. Cloutier through this nightmare. The message out there for everyone is there hasn't been an honest door-to-door -door salesman since the Fuller Brush days, and don't buy anything that comes to your door uninvited. In fact, don't answer the door. Thank you. Through the member statements, the member from Northumberland, Quinty. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to bring you to the attention of my colleagues, the presence of representatives from the Canadian Propane Association who are conducting the Advocacy Day here at Queen's Park. And don't forget their reception tonight in room 247 from 5 to 7. Some of them are here with us, uh, Speaker. As I'm sure many of you know, the propane industry in Ontario is important both for our economy and the environment. The propane industry in Ontario provides good-paying jobs for over 3,000 Ontarians. 
It generates nearly $2 billion in economic activity and $253 million on tax revenues every year in Ontario. Approximately 100,000 households in Ontario rely on propane, including my own house, Speaker, as a, their primary source of heating fuel, not to mention commercial, industrial, and agricultural application. In fact, 45% of Canada's overall propane use occurs in Ontario. Propane is also good for the environment. It's a low emission energy option that offers win-win solutions for both government and consumers. Propane is an especially important energy option for rural Ontario, such as my constituents, in many of our ridings. In my riding, many residents opt to use propane. It's an affordable and accessible method of fuel for furnaces, vehicle, and of course, barbecuing. On behalf of my colleagues, I extend a warm welcome to members of the Ontario propane industry. Welcome. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Well, thanks, uh, Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, Saturday, I was honoured to attend the Brockville Conference of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's Spring Fling. This wonderful event raised over $19,000 so the Society's dedicated volunteers can continue bringing hope to those in need. Like so many other charitable groups, they work very quietly and their good deeds go often unseen. Last year alone, the core, their core programs assisted 364 adults and 314 children. That's over 600 lives made better because of their commitment to caring. The range of programs and services they provide uh, directly and with community partners is quite remarkable, Speaker. Assistance includes food vouchers, help with rent and utility payments, transportation, and a Christmas program. They also operate a 24-7 helpline with volunteers taking turns monitoring a cell phone to connect people in crisis and give them that help. They even offer summer activity programs allowing at-risk youth to participate in rowing, kayaking, swimming, gymnastics or dance. And they're justifiably proud of their amazing Weekender program. It fills the gap for JK to grade six students who rely on school breakfast programs by sending them home with nutritious food on Fridays. In just a few years, it's grown tremendously from three schools and 15 students to now feeding 209 students in 14 schools. These volunteers are truly putting the society's motto, helping make a difference into action. On behalf of our community and the friends, family, and neighbours whose lives you brightened, I want to thank you, and I want to thank you, Speaker, for allowing me this opportunity to tell their great story here in the House. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, statements. the member from Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, and Westdale. Thanks, Speaker. Speaker, I've got a great story to tell about my alma mater, McMaster. A few years ago, a, a number of students there uh, decided that they would intervene uh, politically by writing letters to Minister Malloy and uh, then uh, Premier McGuinty uh, um, calling for uh, the building of a new humanities building. There were some 400 uh, letters that came in, all handwritten, no form letters, and that money was provided and the L.R. Wilson um, humanities building opened uh, about a couple months ago. And uh, uh, Ryan and Stephanie, took the, who are here today, took the initiative to have postcards sent uh, to the Premier uh, thanking her and, uh, and the government and the Legislative Assembly for the investment. I'd like to read uh, just three quickly, Mr. Speaker. Uh, years ago, I was an undergraduate student who wrote a letter to Minister Malloy and Premier McGuinty. Now I'm a PhD student in the Institute of Globalization. Your investment transformed my life. Thank you. Second letter, I've been on this campus for five years and seeing the building come to life has changed the fabric of campus and places a renewed passion for the arts right in the middle of campus. And finally, hello, Premier, another student here to say thank you for our new amazing building. From the new social sciences lounge to the new black box theater to the amazing space for Indigenous students, we now have a building for us, and we are eternally grateful for your wonderful contributions. Thanks, right. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements? Further members' statements? 
Seeing no further member statements, I believe the member from Leeds Grenville is going to stand on a point of order because he told me he might be. Point of order, Speaker. The member from Leeds Grenville on a point of order. Point of order, Speaker. Uh, I'm seeking a unanimous consent to put forward a motion without notice regarding the Vietnamese heritage and freedom flag. Member from Leeds Grenville seeking unanimous consent, put forward a motion without notice. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Member from Leeds Grenville. Thank you, Speaker. I move that the Vietnamese heritage and freedom flag be flown on the courtesy flagpole on April 29, 2018. Member from Leeds Grenville seeking unanimous consent to raise the flag. Do we agree? agree. Carried. <laughs> um, time for statements is finished. I now move to reports by committees.